Samaj Parivartana Samudaya is a voluntary organization led by prolific environmental activist Sri S. R. Hiremat. Based in Darwat, Karnataka, the organization works in close collaboration with other voluntary organizations, individuals, and academic institutions to promote environmental awareness and human rights. The work they do is primarily related to safeguarding of common lands, social forestry, and development of wastelands. The efforts of SPS and its team led by Sri S.R. Hiremat is geared towards movements that encourage people to organize so everyone has the right to work, to be able to earn a livelihood, and to gain control of community resources such as Jal, Jungle, Jameen, Kanij, and Beach. And more importantly, to be able to achieve these goals through nonviolent direct action. The organization also explores main features of existing government policy and its efficacy with the goal of creating a self-sustainable and a just society based on the principles of truth and non-violence. Over the last 30 years, the team at SPS has worked tirelessly on campaigns to protect common lands for people and for forest and tribal dwellers to have a greater say in the use of natural resources. We take you through a brief look at the work of SPS over its 34-year history. Some of the campaigns SR has led have included fighting big industry against river pollution, wasteland development with a watershed approach in Medleri, protection of common lands in Kusnur. He has participated in the Saving the Western Ghats March and has been an active proponent of the Right to Work campaign with the Employment Guarantee Scheme of the Government of India. More recently, SR has led a very successful campaign against illegal mining issues in Bellari, which have resulted in the Supreme Court instituting a ban on mining in the states of Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. This ban on mining that was issued by the Supreme Court was the first of its kind in environmental jurisprudence in the history of India. There had been continuous reports of Harihar polyfibers, a unit of Grasam, of releasing untreated waste and hazardous chemicals into the river at Harihar. The accumulation of these untreated chemicals from the manufacturing facility had built up to significant amounts in the river, air, and soil, endangering the environment for miles around it. Along with local activists, SR started a campaign against the Birla-owned Harihar polyfiber manufacturing facility. This campaign was to become a pivotal point in his career as an environmental activist. Following a writ petition by SPS in the Supreme Court in 2009, a committee was appointed to look into the allegation of environmental degradation in the area. The National Environment Engineering Research Institute has submitted its EIA report in 2004. It contains suggestions on how to minimize dust from mining, storage and transportation, noise reduction techniques, the safe disposal of mining waste, restoration and stabilization of abandoned mines, and on using scientific mining techniques. But these measures were never implemented. Neary's report and Ministry of Environment and Forest Order, if followed, should have slowed down mining in the region. Instead, environmental clearances have been granted recklessly by the center and the state governments, and permissions for mining activity have increased. But according to Professor Kamath, who has been following the process diligently, there seems to be no desire by the appointed committee to follow through with the order to conduct an estimate, despite the fact that this ore, according to the Supreme Court, could be worth several thousand crore rupees. In addition to pursuing the matter of land grab in the Supreme Court, in the High Court of Karnataka, involving the Lokayukta and other authorities concerned, SPS along with Jan Sangram Parishad and other like-minded organizations have begun to intensify their campaign seeking special courts to try these land grabbing and illegal mining cases. They are conducting these marches to highlight the inaction of the 
current government and sensitize the public on the issue. SR compares the inaction of the current government against land grabbing and related cases involving several ministers and others in the assembly and the parliament to the inaction of the previous government during the illegal mining issue. The team at SPS thinks in terms of movements and not in terms of projects, encouraging people to organize and consciously struggle through nonviolent direct actions on issues like environmental protection and community control over natural resources. India's National Freedom Movement succeeded in incorporating into the national agenda the rights of small and marginal farmers, land to the tiller, and industrial workers, factory to the worker. However, the greatest challenge that we all face today is to establish the rights of people over natural resources. International forces, especially the World Bank and multinational corporations who are trying to bring the corporate sector into the forest areas in the name of efficiency, technical input, and financial investments should be a major source of worry for the society. Optimal development of a country depends on the participatory action by all stakeholders of that society. The process of bringing about such development by large corporations and such must be transparent, empowering, be just and allow for local participation. This is where SPS plays its most effective role. In order to sustain their objective, the team has worked with other organizations such as the Grama Ganarajya Vedike GGV, the Jana Vikas Andolana JVA, and an association of federations called the Favord K, and the National Committee for Protection of Natural Resources to come up with the best possible economic and political solution that would address the problem and in promoting environmental awareness among rural and forest populations. Awareness empowers society. It allows society to be able to fend for itself along with the cooperation and support of an efficient government against privatization by industrial and commercial forces, which include the powerful timber, land, sand, and the mining mafia in the country. SR and his team feel it is important to change the attitude of the government, which has proven to be hostile and neglectful to these marginalized sectors. Currently, a lot of common lands and forests are under the control of the central and state governments. Given its history, the government have neglected the welfare of indigenous forest people and tribals, largely in favor of private industry, all in the name of development. The nexus of government and private industry has had disastrous consequences for these people. The idea is not to inhibit development as the government sees it. Big dams, power plants, big factories, nuclear plants have to be mindful about the environment they operate in. The solutions provided by these mega projects should not only be ecologically sustainable and socially acceptable by the people who live there. Safeguarding of common lands, the forests, and its natural resources has been central to the work of the team at SPS right from its inception. Following a decentralized model would allow for greater benefits from these projects one in which the people are active decision makers and not just beneficiaries. Empowering the Gram Sabhas and the Panchayat Raj, SPS explores main features of existing government policy and its efficacy in allowing local people to have a stronger say in how their resources will be used. Community control over natural resources. Working towards greater participation of locals is central to the philosophy at SPS. India is a representative democracy. We have an administrative wing and we have a representative wing. We entrust these people with the rich natural assets of India. We allow them to be guardians of these resources in an ecosystem that is so fragile that it would take a considerable amount of joint effort by these entities to keep them sustainable for future generations to come. What then do we do when they don't?